And um, doctors are good for diagnosing. And once you get your diagnosis, then it's up to you to take your. Hi guys, we're here today with the owner of Batstone Bus Shop and the publisher of Everything Medical Marijuana Magazine, Jamie Bissey. How are you doing today, Jamie? I'm doing fantastic. That's great. So, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about basically how you got into this business and what your goal is in the future for this business. Like, I know you said you started this business because uh, your son was actually treated Diagnosed. Diagnosed. Right. My son was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy when he was 14. And they prescribed him Vicodin and muscle relaxers, which made him miserable. Constipated him, made him worse. And he was starting to fall down all the time, carrying his plate just from the counter to the kitchen table. Um, falling down, falling down, I went back to the doctor and said, this is scaring me now because if he breaks something, they don't heal with muscular dystrophy like you or I would. It probably wouldn't heal long enough for him to ever walk again if he was to break an, a leg or a hip or something. So he was 14 and what was that feeling like? So when he was 14 and diagnosed, he wasn't able to run as fast anymore and I had been trying to see what was wrong with him since he was six when I first started noticing symptoms. And doctors misdiagnosed him with ADHD and other things. Finally, when he was 14, I took him to Mary Bridges and a doctor looked at him and said, that's muscular dystrophy, which is completely different than ADHD and some of the other things that he had been diagnosed with. And then I went home and researched what muscular dystrophy was, and that's just like a cancer diagnosis. It's a, it's a death diagnosis. Um, and so I went back to, he started falling down on these Vicodins and muscle relaxers and just getting worse and worse. Went back to the doctor, he just turned 18. And the doctor said, I don't know what else to give him. I've heard of cannabis can help. And I said, what? And he said, cannabis. And I said, well, I'm not going to the street and buying cannabis. And he said, no, no, I know a person that actually does medical deliveries of medical cannabis. There was no retail stores open. And I called this person. He was a 70-year-old man. Came over to our house, delivered it in a prescription bottle. And I felt relieved. And immediately the first... Um, I used a vaporizer because I didn't want him combusting it. I got a volcano vaporizer and the first time he used it, he was happy and relieved out of pain and he never took another pain pill after that or muscle relaxer and we've just used cannabis from here on out. And as I started using it and seeing how much it was helping Scotty just vaporizing it, um, there was other people that wanted access to medicine and then the people that I was getting the medicine from needed a safe place to take their medicine instead of driving all over and delivering it. We needed a safe access point for patients to bring medicine and patients to get medicine. That was the, the motto of my store, growing by the patient for the patient. Because patients growing their own medicine don't use pesticides. They don't want to put pesticides in their own medicine. So when the doctor first prescribed it to you for your son, cannabis wasn't legal yet. So, no. so y'all were uh, running the gray running, line. Yeah. But so when it comes to your child, you don't think about that. It's how can I get him out of pain when you're watching him suffer minute by minute. What were your thoughts about cannabis before then? I, I had used it when I was burned, when I was 17 in a fire. My brother had gotten it for me because I couldn't take the pain meds. I was vomiting and wouldn't eat, got down to 83 pounds. It's a miracle I lived through the fire anyway. I was in a coma and pronounced brain dead. And I woke up from it. So I got home, burned 65% of my body. And the pain meds I couldn't eat and my brother started giving me cannabis um, 
he brought me a little pipe and I started smoking it and eating and it helped me and I got better and you know went on to live my life and have Scotty my son I never used it after that until it was suggested by this doctor for okay. Scotty so with the did you see any benefits right away like immediately, immediately instantly for muscular dystrophy it's amazing um, he, he he instantly started laughing, his muscles relaxed, he was hungry, that's another thing with him, he doesn't eat because he's in pain so much. Um, he started socializing with his friends, he started working on his car, which with his friends, that have to be his hands because he can't lift over five pounds. And if he does something repetitively, like turn a screw, it will lock up his muscles. So we have electric screw guns and stuff so he can go out and work on his cars. But what the pain meds and muscle relaxers bedrooms them and makes them depressed and they have no social life. They just lay in a bed. Cannabis made Scotty want to call his friends and socialize and do things and hang out with, around his cars and his friends and, and get out of bed every day. He's not bedridden from this heavy load of narcotics and muscle relaxers. So cannabis takes his pain. It doesn't take it completely away, but you marry it with massage. It keeps it at a low enough level that he's able to have a quality of life. And us people in pain management world, that's what we look for is that sweet spot called quality of life. And um, he's able to have dreams and aspirations and get up every morning to work towards those dreams, which is a show truck that he's building right now. Um, which, you know, you, it's scary for me to watch him make a goal that's a year or two away, like the truck that he's building now, because I don't know, his heart's a muscle. It could give out at any moment, you know. Um, but he's thriving and happy and the dis it doesn't cure the disease but it keeps that pain and degeneration of the disease at bay is where the muscle relaxers and pain pills yes they can take the pain away but they also shut your body's functions down your digestive system your everything goes into that low mode and you just want to lay in bed you, and slowly that kills your soul okay. so you get diagnosed, the doctor prescribes you cannabis as an alternative medication right. because the pharmaceutical medication is not making them feel pretty good. The cannabis is still illegal, but you're getting it. Did you have any problems, like, legally? Well, I immediately wanted to open up a shop. There was one in Seattle that was too far away that were friends that I met. And so what I did is I applied for a business license as an alternative medicine shop in five different counties. One was Shelton, one was Lacey, one was um, Tumwater, five different counties. And three of them came back with a yes. And so I picked Lacey. I was too scared to go in Olympia or state capital. So I went next to it, which was Lacey, so I could still be close to, you know, court dealings and that stuff if need be, but I'm not right in the state capital. Um, so we opened up in Lacey as an alternative medicine shop and um, started bringing in growers that were growing pesticide-free good medicine patients, um, had them bring their medicine in and started letting patients know that um, we were delivering to let them know that we had a storefront now they could come to. And not a month after that, um, Kiron in Olympia opened up. Oh, I can't think of the name of his store, but Kiron's the owner. I think he owns like four of them now, retail stores. Okay. But he opened up like 30 days after me in Olympia. And then um, a Sorry. year or two later, Lacey Cross or Tacoma Cross and Lacey, the Crosses came in um, to town and they were doing skullduggery out of their door, training pain pills for cannabis, doing lines off their counters, da 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 da. They weren't taking this seriously as a medicine. And then the owner from the shop, 
um, Lacey Cross went and put on his Facebook a big duffel bag full of rolled up hundreds and twenties. So I think it's going to take me all night to count this. The feds seen that and the feds came to town and they brought local jurisdiction and they took all of us stores down. So because of Lacey Cross, I've got 25 felony arrests on me. I had one of the city councilmen was one of my patients. I had the city of Lacey was fine with what I was doing. They knew about my son. They knew I was taking good care of patients. But they had to come in and take this guy out because he wasn't. And to bring local jurisdiction in, evidently they took all of us because of him. But he ended up getting federal charges. I ended up getting my charges dismissed. But I still have 25 felony arrests on my... Wow. Okay, so... Um, like I told the judge, is this is my son's medicine. I'm, I'm doing a good thing here for my son and the other patients here. Why am I in trouble because this man do, was doing this? Yeah. And I went and talked to the prosecutor and they said, yes, you're right. We're not after you, Jamie. And they said, we do have to, you have to be good for a year and we'll dismiss these charges. And I was opened up the next day. So, um, that's all I've done is gone and told the truth and talked to the prosecutors and stuff to be able to stay open. And then in the meantime, lots of other shops opened up since then and lobbyists came in and big investors came in and slowly we got our 502 laws, but they're not the laws that us medical people wanted. And they slowly brought in recreational and they shit hammered medical in a backdoor way by making it so we can't get the products that we had that were medical grade, medical, no pesticides. Also the prices, now that they put this 3.33 excise tax on every product sold, that takes the prices to where that really are so inflated for the sick and the poor. Um, can of caps that are cost pennies to make or three bucks a cap out the door that we used to sell for a buck. Mm. You could get a hundred of them for a buck a piece. And they were 25, 30 milligram CBD caps. We can only allow to have 10 milligrams ones out here where they have to take three of them to get the effects of what we've carried for years. So not only have they opened up recreational and allowed all these pesticides to come into our market, they get to make this excise tax off of it, and the medical people aren't able to get their products, and if they can, they have to pay such a high price for them, and you don't know if they're full of pesticides or not, unless you go to a shop like mine, where I vet the vendors, and make sure that there's no pesticides in my store. But a lot of the shops out there are just recreational, and if they have the medical addendum, usually they're really not trained into how to buy medical products and clean products. So, so basically, it's, it's overflowing with people that are just more interested in money slinging weed versus actually caring about the product and the people. Right. Which I, why we did all of this and why we fought so hard for these laws were so that there would be clean medicine out there for patients and this would be taken seriously as a medicine. But they are doing everything they can to stop that. They don't want this taken seriously as a medicine, but they want to make money off it. So they don't care about inflating the prices. They don't care about pesticides. And it's really shit hammered the people in the industry like me that got into it for medical reasons and because we want it taken seriously as a medicine they're not allowing the research on it either is another thing because it's a schedule one yeah. we tried to get the DEA to bring it down and reschedule it so we can do research on it to prove everything we're saying but the pharmaceutical companies don't want that to happen because they're trying to play catch up to be able to find some loophole so they can patent this plant and they can take this away from us and have it all through pharmaceutical companies. And that's probably what's going to happen because of money and politics, which will be very sad. I hope I am not around to see that. So, so what, are, what are some things that you're anticipating to happen next year? Or the next five years? 
I'm anticipating that medical is going to be taken more and more seriously, or cannabis is as a medicine, and more people are going to demand access to clean medicine. Um, I think that the research and the media, the word's going to get out there that um, this is one of the best fighters for cancer, one of the best medicines to combat that battle. And Israel, they're way far ahead of us in their research, and I hope to be finding out more about what, where they are now in their research and how they're treating patients there in Israel because they're so far ahead of us. Yeah. But for some reason, they're trying to keep that information from out, getting out. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't know that. Um, when I first opened up, and I was found out about RSO and how to make it, Rick Simpson oil online, Israel had um, an actual picture of a cancer cell, and then adding THC to it, and you watch the THC attack the cancer without hurting the healthy cell. That was actually on the internet. You cannot find it now. They're somehow blocking this, all this good research from Israel from coming into the United States and into. Why do you think that? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to put writers on it and see if we can find out. Yeah. Um, because I, the reason why I think it is is because, once again, big pharmaceutical can't patent this plant. They cannot make these products that we're making out here. Only holistical companies can. Um, so I think they're trying to get a loophole politically somehow so they can take that and be able to do that. And in the meantime, they're trying to keep the research from getting out there until they have control of the cure or the whatever you want to call how THC attacks cancer. Um, is, is that's why I believe they don't want it out, is because big pharmaceutical companies haven't been able to take control of it yet. All right, so where can the people find more information that you provide, and where are you located at? Just go ahead and let them know. More information? As far as about medical cannabis? Well, they can go on to our website at Everything Medical Marijuana Magazine, and you can ask me questions through that. You can also get the magazine at any Barnes & Noble nationwide. Um, and you can also come into that stone bud shop. There you go. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Thank you, Jay, for sitting down with us and giving us all this great information. Until the next time, guys. Peace.